Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name is Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at Woodpecker's Stealth Stop, miter saw, fence, and stop system. We're gonna take a look at how to set it up, uh, some alternative methods to something that we gave you in our earlier deep dive, and I wanna show you a couple of real nifty little tricks. Okay, let's get started. The Stealth Stop system is set up so that you can set it up in three different ways. You can either do a vertical fence, an embedded fence, or a combination where you have one of each, embedded and vertical. Now in the first deep dive on the Stealth Stop, I showed you a little trick about embedding a track flush with the table, where instead of routing a groove, we actually used a piece of plywood that was the same thickness as the track itself. That was half-inch Baltic birch plywood. Now the problem is, Baltic birch plywood, the prices have gone through the roof. So I was looking for an alternative and I found one that I actually like better. This is MDO plywood, medium density overlay. Now this is half-inch material that's exactly half an inch. It's ever so slightly thicker than the track on the Stealth Stop, which is just exactly what you want. Uh, it's also very, very flat, very, very stable, exterior grade, so it can stand up to a little bit of moisture, and the surface is a resin impregnated paper that's very, very slick and very easy to work with. So what I did was I took a piece of the half inch material and I made my tabletop. Then I drilled my holes and mounted the track. And then the last step, I cut my pieces and butted it up on either side of the track. And it just worked out beautifully and it came together really fast. Now to get double duty out of my table, I came in with our hole boring jig, perforated the top in a 96 millimeter grid of 20 millimeter holes, uh, just like a Festool MFT table. And so now I can use Woodpecker's uh, work holding system or any other clamp that works with that 2096 spacing. So a couple of the tricks that I'm gonna show you right now are very dependent on having a stop set at exactly 12 inches. So I have fiddled with this stop to get it to where my piece is exactly 12 inches long. Now after I got that 12 inches long, I made a mark where the tape goes in the track. And what I'm gonna do now is affix my tape with the 12 inch mark right on that line. So I have about 15 sixteenths of an inch past my 12 inch mark in my track. So I'm gonna cut my tape at 11 and 1 16th. Now I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna very carefully put that one foot line right on my mark. Now we'll just align the tape in the groove and work down toward the other end. And we'll just snip it off at the other end. So now my scale is dialed into my saw for anything from 11 and a half inches to 59 inches. Only problem is what are we gonna do when we wanna cut stock shorter than 11 and a half inches? We don't have a stop out over top of our main table. Well, I've come up with a pretty good solution and it works really well. Let me show you. So since I got my miter station finished several weeks ago, what I've been doing for short work pieces is I'll grab any piece of stock that I have laying around that I know is square on both ends. Then I'll put my work piece that I want to cut here. If we're going to cut 20 of these, I'll just take the first one and mark it with a pencil. Then I'll put that under the laser, bring my piece of scrap stock up against it, and then bring a stop up to that lock it, and then use the micro adjuster to make any final adjustments. That works pretty good. But on YouTube, I saw someone 
and I would love to give him credit, but I can't find the video again, who had a great idea for this. Instead of just using a random piece of stock, use one that's exactly 12 inches long. Now, I can actually use my scale. If I want a piece that's three inches long, there's a foot. I just need to go to 15 inches, dial that in to 15 inches, put my 12 inches up against there, and I am right there on the same line. Now let's see how well this works to get repeatable three inch pieces. All three exactly the same and all three exactly three inches. Now I thought that 12 inch block trick was fantastic until I turned on YouTube this morning and I saw a video from my buddy Brian Sedgley at Sedge Tools and he took this one step further. He took his 12 inch long piece and glued it to a second piece. So now, instead of having your fingers in there three inches away from the blade holding the piece, Brian puts his like this. Now, we're 12 inches from the stop, and I can take my hold down for my miter saw, and instead of holding on to that by hand, I can clamp it in place and make that cut with my hands completely out of the way. And it's still spot on. So I have this put together with this piece, three quarters of an inch thick. That's gonna work with anything uh, that's uh, 16th either side of that, okay? This one is 11 16th, so I can turn it around if I have thinner stock, I can use this for 11 16 or down to about 5 8 I'm going to make a couple more with half inch thick material that'll let me go down to thin stock too. So our 12 inch extension block does a great job of taking care of the short work pieces. What about the other end? What do we do when we need to stop beyond the 59 inch length that we have available here? Well, I've got a good solution for that too. Let's take a look. So if I need to go beyond 59 inches with my stop, I've got a second piece of track here, and I have the stealth stop brackets in it. We're gonna actually slide this into the track and create an extension. Now we'll just slide this up, stop at any random point, and then I'm going to clamp it up. And when we get that level, make sure we're at the front of our groove and lock it down to the track. Now I can take my stop out as far as I need it. And with this setup, if I slide to the end here and lock it up right at the end of this and put the stop at the end, I can now get a full eight feet away from my cut line. Now, if you wanna set your stealth stop up like this, if you already have an embedded track, you can buy just one single track and a bracket set. That'll get it taken care of. Or if you're buying it all at the same time, go ahead and get the combo package that gives you two tracks, all the brackets and everything you need and a couple stops. Either way, you can set it up permanently with a double track, or you can do it like this and only use the double track when you need it for an extension. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching this deep dive into the Stealth Stop Miter Saw Fence and Stop System. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel 
and hit that notification bell so you always know when our great videos come out. Now, if you'd like more information about the Stealth Stop, there's a link right over here to the earlier deep dive on it, and there's a link down in the description that'll take you to the ordering page. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.